Cycling performance is often assumed to be a really simple equation. It's all about power to weight. So just train your FTP, stop snacking, go faster. Easy. Well, actually no, it is a little bit more complicated than that. So here's why I think power to weight is rubbish. I mean, well, obviously not totally rubbish, just overemphasized. We all know those cyclists who are perhaps not exactly slim, or you could even describe them as generously proportioned, who are nonetheless extremely strong on the bike. Now that is super annoying as you have salad for dinner, snack on celery, and sip on black coffee. How do they do it? Well, it's important to remember that weight is only a hindrance to you on the bike when you're going uphill or accelerating. So of course, if you're running steady on the flat, then it doesn't matter if you weigh a lot. What matters is your absolute power. Even when the road does start to go uphill and your weight counts against you, don't forget that gravity is not the only thing holding you back. You still have to overcome rolling resistance and aerodynamic drag. So if you're going up a 5% climb and rolling along at 20 to 30 k an hour, get low, get aero, and sit on the wheel. It will really help. Of course, aerodynamic drag matters far more the faster you're going. So on steeper climbs, yes, your weight will hold you back more. In fact, the steeper the climb, the more power to weight does count. That's why on the Angleroo, I really wished I had been a little bit more disciplined with my chocolate consumption. What goes up generally also comes down. And going downhill, gravity is on your side. So actually, the more weight you have, the more it will help you especially if it's so fast you don't have to pedal, well then power doesn't matter and power to weight is definitely meaningless. Heavier riders have a real advantage on fast descents. Another thing to remember is that when it comes to dropping people on the bike or if you're on the receiving end getting dropped, it's very rarely about your FTP to weight ratio, unless you're riding up a long, steady climb. No, no, no. What matters is how well you can attack or cover attacks. And that's about very short bursts of power. Now, you can have an amazing FTP to weight ratio and still be unable to produce short bursts of power. So sometimes you might care more about your power to weight ratio over 15 seconds or a minute than over long climbs. Another thing to bear in mind is that when power to weight does matter on a climb, it's actually the total weight of you, your bike, and your helmet, and your shoes and clothes that counts against you. So, if you're a smaller, lighter rider with a better FTP, that weight forms a bigger proportion of the total weight. So actually, you could say that lighter riders with a better FTP are actually being penalized. Now, if that sounds like the wind of a smaller rider who had to race with the UCI's minimum weight requirement of 6.8 kilos, then you're right, it is me whinging. And I'm very happy that nowadays, I don't have to worry about that weight limit anymore. Finally, we come to what I think is the single most important factor in cycling performance, psychology. The best bike riders, and not just those with a good power to weight ratio, they're the ones who can push themselves the hardest. And that is really, really hard to measure in a lab and put a number on. Basically, if you can suffer for longer and hang onto that wheel, then you might do better than someone who has nominally a better power to weight ratio than you. So there you go, power to weight ratio is not the be all and end all. Although yes, it is quite important. Why not tell us in the comments if you know what your power to weight ratio is? You can click down here to subscribe for more great content and if you want to watch some GCN videos on how to improve your power, although maybe not your weight, click down here.